guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's Sub Email on Twitter, the Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming back at you to the Let's Play episode of Lust Shards, Tate's Path. So, yeah, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now up for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel, get some awesome rewards like permanent access to our community Discord server and full access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you were up, and let's go. All right. <clears throat> Your stupid, meaningless thoughts. Scribbles is right. My mind can create some scary things on its own, and some stupid ones, too. Thankfully, I won't have to overthink too much, as a bright light appears in front of me again. I'm back! The cat says, bowing profoundly to the spotted feline in front of him, whom has been waiting for his return with a held breath. Thou art a most wondrous poet and gleeker. I knoweth yond, but what news doth thee bringeth from Lady Marina? Wouldst thou beast so kind as to share thy information with me, O Leaf Tate? Huh. And here I thought those guys from earlier were nerds. I also hate the fact that I understood you. Was Marina busy? I really hope we didn't mess up their night. She was a little tipsy flirting with the waiter, but I doubt I ruined anything. Here's the tea. First off, we were placed in the same building. That's awesome! Unfortunately, we are on different floors and wings, and we'll still be pretty far away from each other. And now I know what you're thinking, but Marina specified we won't get to change our rooms if either of our neighbors mysteriously disappear. I wasn't thinking that. Shh, it's okay, I'm not judging you. I was thinking about it as well. Here's your lunch and dinner card. With this, we won't have to pay for our meals, except breakfast for some reason. Shoot, we didn't pay for the dinner tonight, did we? Don't worry about it. Aiden acts like a bitch sometimes, but he often pays for my meals. And Dallin does it without hesitation. Is it okay to take advantage of them like that? Hey, they're rich! Do you even know how much these leaders and vice leaders are being paid? Um, I'm assu I assume a lot? A lot! So no, I decided not to feel bad about it. I agree with him. Eat the rich or make them buy you something to eat. And here's your key card, room 72. Mine is 123. Sweet. Shall we go check them out? Of course, but aren't you missing anything? M missing? Perhaps something personal and important people usually bring on trips? I don't think... Wait. Damn it! My luggage is still inside the academy. I gotta do... I gotta go get it. Don't bother. The meeting room... Don't bother. The meeting room where you left it is closed. But worry not. Oh, there. Oh, thou fair maiden. I shall bring it to thee. Hey, how'd I do? Did I sound all old and fancy? It was pretty good, although you'd want to replace Shao with Shout for the best effect. Sorry, I can't actually pretend to care anymore. I'll just teleport into the meeting room and get your bag sometime later. Now let's get a move on. Hop back on. Hop is slowly becoming my favorite word. I will not say no to another broom ride. Aw, cuties. Cuties on a broom. There you know, coffee done. Mm. Hot damn, that is a delicious brew. Alright. We soar up just enough to pass the rooftops of some nearby houses from the residential area. Once past, the dorm buildings were easy to spot. All of them are relatively close to one another, divided by either very tall trees or the occasional narrow street. Let's see. Bricks, number three. Vines, number... Ah, there it is! We land in front of a six-story building made of diamond-patterned bricks with a reddish hue. A wall of greenery partially partially covering two of its sides with various plants and vines also trying to make their way up the front wall. That's all I managed to observe, alongside the big number three on the front door, before Tate flings it open and drags me inside. The interior is very well furnished considering it's a common room, where anyone comes and goes as they please. And there were bookshelves filled with, you guessed it, magical items. Oh, and some books too here. Uh, some books too here and there. Tall pillars hold the spiral staircase I'm being, cr I'm being rushed to climb, and numerous paintings decorate the walls beside the crystal-powered lamps. As we get to the third floor, Tate finally slows down, but he still buzzes with excitement. We stop in front of a door. 72. Here we are! This one is yours! Let's see how lucky you got. Aren't all door rooms the same? I fish out the card Tate gave me and try to figure out how to use it. Not even close. You should see Dallin's dorm, or Aiden's. Those guys have a mansion inside a building. Marina is, Marina's is legit just a penthouse. Uh, it kind of comes with the position. Then, as unimportant first years with no achievements, we should be thankful we at least don't have roommates, huh? I wouldn't mind having a particular someone as a roommate. My mind is a little too focused, a little too focused on how the hell this keycard works to respond to Tate's bold statement. It's new. You gotta peel off the protective seal. Yep, he's right. A thin layer of plastic comes off after a short inspection. A regular key would have been less trouble. 
I'm pretty sure magic easily beats a regular key mechanism. You might be right. One unexpected, one unexpected guests in the middle of the night. I push open the door and try to find a light switch, just to find there is no light bulb. Wow. Take ducks under my arm to get a good look inside. Not bad. Oh, and look, there's a door there. Maybe there are more rooms. You're a special little guy after all. Huh. He invites himself in, spinning around while walking towards the other door, trying to see, trying to see everything he can, trying to see everything he can. The room resembled my old bedroom, except that it was slightly bigger, with a nicer window but smaller bed. I follow the curious cat as he opens the second door. Annoyance can be seen on his face as a plain bathroom comes into view, but this is fantastic news for me. I have no need for more space than the one bedroom, and my own bathroom is, big, is a big win. The lights work fine, but it looks like the shower is missing its shower head. I'm gonna need to bring these up and bring up these missing objects to someone in charge. There you go. Water time. Hmm. But hey, at least I don't have to pay to stay here. Tate's ears suddenly perk up. I gotta go. Huh? What was that? Sorry, I can't stay anymore. A nice dorm room, but you're gonna have to come see me, see mine sometime. But I seriously need to go. See you in the morning. Sleep tight. Before I can protest, he's gone. Wow, this bathroom really bummed him out. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's not the reason. He's just a weird one. There are a lot of maybes and what ifs to be thrown around when it comes to Tate, so I shouldn't bother. He said he'll tell me everything soon, and I trust him. Uh, how was an actual yawn? Okay. I'm super tired. Today was way too socially tiring. Aren't you going to shower? I would, but all the spare clothes are in my luggage. Actually, it's pretty warm in here. I'll just sleep naked, and hopefully Tate comes back with my stuff in the morning. It would have been pretty nice if he had a phone so I could text him about it. I take off my tie and unbutton my shirt, feeling the fur on my chest along the way. Rough, coarse, dusty. Eh, who am I kidding? I feel all dirty and sticky. I decide not to be a filthy little guy today and hop in the shower, headless as it is. At least the water is hot, even if it feels like I'm being hosed, like I'm being hosed down. Bathroom appliances are included too, even if they're not my favorite brands. As tired as I am here under the hot water, I can't help but think about Tate. A new feline friend that loves to tease because he probably has a hunch about who that about how that body of his makes me feel. Athletic, lithe body with a belly always exposed. He knows what he's doing. And it's working better than he thinks. Imagination goes a little wild. Explicit images of him and I flashing on flashing on and off. At first he's bouncing up and down while I relax on my back, his hands intertwined with mine. Then he's holding my chin up, making me look in his eyes as he's thrusting with a smirk. Now he's clenching the now he's clenching now he's clenching the bed sheets, eyes rolled back as my whole weight stands on top of him. A whole 13 pounds of skin and bone. These things can at least come close to reality. In the future. No matter how long it might take. Needless to say, this erection of mine did not last long with the vivid images popping in. With a sigh of satisfaction, I step out of the shower. Step down the drain goes the only evidence of the lewd thoughts I'd had. I drag my legs to the bed after a quick drying and flop on it, ready to dream. Just like that? Legs spread out, legs spread, ass out, no covers. Muffled noises. <laughs> Suit yourself. Maybe I'll experience my first cold in... ever. It could be fun. <sighs> yeah, we'll see about that. <laughs> hmm. Huh. What is this? I don't think I've seen this part of your brain before. Hey. Hey, mortal. Hmm. I suppose he's still asleep. Oh, could this be... He's dreaming. Ooh, what's that? It's like, you know. What's that other thing? Is that a person? This is pretty interesting. Hmm. Hmm. Snow. Silence is a bit suffocating, not gonna lie. All these new images would usually be narrated by you, but since your mind is constructing this dream, it's a little busy at the moment. I might as well try to do it in your f do it in your place. Maybe it's fun. Why else would you do it all day long? The secret is to say every word with the confidence of a god, even if you have no idea what is happening. <clears throat> we find ourselves in the middle of a winter night, the town's road being covered by about a foot of s foot worth of snow. 
The wind is blowing hard enough to mimic a sad snowstorm by lifting the outermost layer of snowflakes, carrying it around with intense irregular movements. I'm assuming the scenery is here because you decided to go to sleep without a blanket like a fucking moron, and now you're cold as hell. A shot of a foot, dramatically stepping in the snow, is presented in this frame. The foot belongs to a small, cloaked figure, which struggles to move through the thick, thick white blanket ready to pass out at any moment. The wind is strong enough to not only take the cloak away flying at the first opportunity, but their whole body with it, toying with them like a puppet. A sad, dramatic scenery. Then... Huh? What's happening? What? That's it? What kind of fucking dream was that? That made no sense. Who dreams only the beginning of a story? I'm disappointed to say the least. And what was this? What's with the fucking knocking? Oh. I wake up to the sound of knocking in the middle of the night. Oh, you're up. I slowly open my eyes and regain my senses. A cold feeling surges through me. The chilled, the chilled sheets don't. It doesn't help much. Pressed against my stomach, face, thighs, and dick. Right. I'm naked. The knocking becomes faster and louder, signaling my impatience. Who in the hell? It's coming from the window? Aren't I on the third floor? Sleep rubs away, replacement by confusion and curiosity. A figure stands that floats outside my window. <gasps> Tate! Wait. His eyes are fixed on my uncovered butt, sprawled on the bed. Thankfully, the parts that really matter are covered by my tail. Still, it doesn't stop me from panicking, searching for the blanket, instantly becoming a cocoon of shame. I'M TELEPORTING INSIDE! <laughs> the next second, the purple cat is at the foot of my bed, smiling widely. I'm not sure if I should be happy to see him, mad he woke me up, or outright terrified by his presence here, so I stay quiet, staring with a judging expression. I brought your luggage. Th thanks. Could, could, could that not have waited until morning? What time is it? It's get out of bed and come with me right now o'clock. I would argue, or at least ask more questions, but I doubt I'll but I doubt I'll end up going back to sleep in any case. Second hill. It is Walter Time. Damn it! Fine, let me get dressed. Hurry up! Well? Well? Turn around! Or go in the other room! I already saw everything there is to see from the window. You don't have to be shy. I'm not changing in front of you. Ugh, can't watch a good show nowadays without being shunned. He walks into the bathroom and closes the door. I pick out some clothes from my luggage and get started. I have multiple pairs of the same jeans, shirt, and tie, because why would I change perfection? Except that this time I put on some nicer underwear, just in case. I admit that you have surprisingly high chances of getting laid. You think so? Absolutely. Most of these people are hornier than me. And I'm a lust demon. Are you done yet? You have, like, four things to put on. It can't be that complicated. Unless... Are you thinking you need my help to get dressed? Well, if you insist... He bursts through the door, a face dropping when he sees me pinning the last shirt button. A little late. Too bad. At least now we can go. Get on, we don't have time. Goodbye, sweet bed. My new weird and hot friend needs me. The crisp early autumn night air hits my fur harder than usual, getting through to, through to my skin. For the first time, Tate, picks up the, Tate picked up the speed without much regard for my comfort, which isn't too bad since I already got used to flying, at least a little bit. Uh, we sure are in a rush tonight, huh? Yep. Is there any point to me asking why? It, it is... It is... But it is if you want to break, break awkward silence. Will I even get a response? Nope. You'll see when we get there. It's a surprise. Is it a good surprise or a murder surprise? I told you! I would never murder you. You're too cute. You get away with it this time on half on behalf of the compliment. One statement from him and the cold air is no, no longer bothers me. In fact, one more and my blood will start boiling. We make our way towards a deep part of the forest. The occasional clearing are the only reference, reference points I can find. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to go ahead and give a quick shout-out to my lovely bronze-tier patrons. Thank you all for all you do for the channel. We greatly appreciate y'all. Thank you to our silver-tier patron, Cade Silverman. You are awesome. Thank you for going a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. And thank you to our gold-tier patron, Amr. We love you. You're awesome. We hope you enjoy your new icon. And anyway, y'all, if y'all want to get your names in the credits, it's as little as $5. But anyway, I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye!